I am here at Microsoft Ignite 2018 with two special guests, Mike and Sharon. Can you introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm uh, Mike Flasco. I run our product management group for data integration and governance at Microsoft. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharon, and I'm a product manager on Azure Data Factory working with Mike. So Azure Data Factory, you might know this is a little theme here. Um, Azure Data Factory, a lot of announcements and some cool things coming up. Uh, you just did a session here at Microsoft Ignite as well. Can you tell us a little bit about the highlights, what's new, what's exciting? Sure. Um, Sharon, do you want to take that one? I think you can do the highlights. Sure, I'll start. All right. So uh, a, a few things. One is, you know, we had at last Ignite, we had shared Data Factory version 2, which is a pretty material upgrade uh, you know, from our perspective on, on Data Factory. Um, and it was public preview at last Ignite. And so the kind of the exciting part of this one is a lot of it is all general, generally available now that we had made that generally available a few months ago. Um, and it, at least for me, the exciting part was we were able to show what we showed last time fully programmatically. This time we were able to show all of the new visual tools in the web, as well as a few things that are coming on the roadmap, like visual data transformation and that kind of stuff. And I think one of the things that are, they're still in private preview right now, is uh, the data flow capability, which is bringing more of those transformations natively into Azure Data Factory. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works, um, and maybe if you can, a little bit about why you're bringing that into Azure Data Factory? Sure. Yeah. Do you want to take that, sir? Yeah, for sure. Um, so basically, um, there, there was a lot of computations with like data movement with copy. That was kind of a code-free experience. And we noticed that a lot of when it came to transformations, you were using Databricks, but it wasn't as like compliant to the code-free experience we wanted users to have, especially if we, if we want to approach ADF in terms of all up um, kind of authoring for data scientists who don't have to learn that kind of script to do transformation. So data flow kind of came out as a result of that. Um, so you can think of joins, anything that you know through your common transformations, aggregates, that's all available through Dataflow um, with ADF. And I don't know, does it need to add on that? Yeah. I think probably one, one of the interesting things is that it, it's not a new data processing engine. It's really an experience, a productivity experience for those who want to articulate data transformation fully visually. And then we kind of inside of the, the runtime, as you build visually, we're generating a DSL. And then we're translating that DSL down to execution on uh, Databricks Spark as the first target engine and you know maybe other engines uh, in time. So it's all on Azure Databricks. Uh, but like you said, there is no code. So for those of us who have heard of Databricks but we haven't really got our hands mm -hmm. dirty, um, we can still use it. Is that right? Yeah. Perfectly. So uh, it, that, that's a great point. Like I think the goal is just give you a visual transformation experience. The fact that it's running uh, on the Databricks engine it is notable because it lets you work with structured data, unstructured data, lets you scale out the computation, but really the point of the experience is that you can work visually in the experience and not have to be an expert of the underlying tech or the engine or you know learn how to code as Sharon was uh, you know in the various big data languages uh, as Sharon was uh, alluding to. So. And Sharon, is this your first time at Microsoft Ignite? Yes, this is my first time. <laughs> yeah. How do you like it? I love it. It's been really rewarding. I was at the booth for like the first couple hours of the day and just meeting all the customers. And actually, I was just telling Mike, um, one customer came up to me and was like, hey, I came in with zero data experience, but in six weeks, me and two data scientists got a project working end to end. And so that was really rewarding to see how kind of like I said, our code free investments are really kind of paying off. And so, yeah, it's just great meeting customers face to face, putting meeting you as well, just putting a name to the email. So it's always great. Yeah. Absolutely. And then maybe a little bit outside of Azure Data Factory. There are so many new announcements with, you know, SQL Server 2019 and the capabilities there. Uh, can you share a little bit about what you're excited about, maybe just outside of the Azure Data Factory space? Sure. Um, I, I think for me, a, a lot of the new announcements that have come from, you know, Databricks, DW, et cetera, I think, you know, there's been uh, a lot of feedback where people have been trying to, you know, build their full analytics stack up in the cloud and seeing all the innovation that's come through, you know, DW in terms of its scale points, et cetera, has been probably the, the highlight for me. You know, obviously being an integration guy, that's that's the stuff that, that resonates for me. So Yeah. I think just all of Azure's push to kind of when it comes down to the customer, like what is your experience piecing everything together? Um, there's all these kind of options when it comes to Azure, but like things like, for example, like the common data model that they, was announced this week, like it's all about making things easier for the customer to piece things together, um, which I think is really exciting to see. Yeah. 
And then there's um, something new in Power BI. So data flows everywhere. Everyone wants a data flow is what I, I kind of feel. They have data flows now in Power BI as well. Uh, can you talk to a little bit about maybe what the differences are between ADF data flows, Power BI data flows, and when to use what? Yeah, sure. Me too. Uh, yeah. You want to go in? Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'm the lucky winner of that question. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, um, the, the way we're looking at it is the the kind of the data flow experience and, you know, maybe we need to work on the naming a little bit, but um, that we were, we previewed in Data Factory is really for that kind of professional integrator, professional DW uh, a person who you, you, you're kind of implementing a spec. You've got a known set of data you need to pull from and you've got to generate kind of it to a target schema or to a target data set. And really it's about kind of filling in the middle or mapping in the middle through, you know, some number of transforms, aggregates, filters, et cetera, right? And so what we found is these experiences that kind of go left to right like that work really well from kind of known left side to known right side. Um, on the flip side, you've got these other experiences that more like you open the data set and you visually see it in a grid and you kind of play with the data. We find that those experiences work really well when, you know, your job is to explore the data, see what's there, see what's available to you. And somebody says, hey, can you build me a data set that has X data in it? It really is less important what the target schema is so long as you've got the, the data values that, that they're after. And so what we found it from kind of discussing with a bunch of customers is that depending upon the scenario and kind of, you know, personal choice, people like the various types of experiences. Probably what you'll see from us in, you know, not the too distant future is that both types of experiences will be natively available in Data Factory. Very cool. And then a little bit on the roadmap. I think you shared some of this in, in the session. Can you kind of uh, summarize um, what's coming, what can we look forward to, something you're working on, any secrets you can share? Um, yeah, so data flow is like one of our big investments, just continuous improvements to our UI, flexible triggering options. Um, another big thing is like we really like the idea of community. So um, Mike kind of talked about in his session today was the idea of templates. So being able to create pipelines, but share that within your org, share that within the broader community itself. And we're really excited to see kind of what comes out of that and what people kind of make and share with the community. Um, also, further VNet support is something that we're working on. Um, yeah, is there anything else you wanted to add? Yeah. Um, I think I can actually maybe talk about the governance side of it a little sure. bit, yeah. Um, and then maybe a little bit outside of Data Factory is uh, you know the, the topic of data governance and proper data handling and privacy and whatnot has really become a you know a top of mind for a lot of companies, especially with GDPR and other things hitting. And so um, that's going to be another area of focus for us uh, in the coming uh, in the coming year, probably with some innovation in and around Data Factory. Very good. And you mentioned uh, community. Um, how, if, if some of the people watching this, they want to get involved, they want to try out something, maybe some of the private previews, um, how can they get in touch with you? How can they be part of that, especially if it's, you know, a customer case or something like that? Yeah, so like user voice is a great way. We're kind of looking through user voice, looking at what people are thumbing up. Um, within the UI itself of Data Factory, we kind of have feedback and we're constantly combing through to see what are the users, reaching out to them directly to be like, hey, um, like, you know, how can we create this feature even better? What is your use case? Understanding those scenarios. So I think that's a great way. We're constantly looking at all the common forum stack overflow to see like who is posting and like, yeah, yeah say that. And I would add, you know, if you're not finding something there, just reach out directly to us. Um, you know, we do a lot of uh, direct integration, especially if you want to get involved in some of the previews that you've heard about in the sessions. Probably the easiest way is to send us an email. Um, you can send me an email. It's mike.flasco at microsoft.com. And, you know, we're happy to, you know, get you a part of all of the early efforts that we're doing to hear your feedback. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your time here today and um, for telling, you know, all the great things coming up. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Microsoft Ignite. Thanks for having us. Thank you.